what we're doing now is we are creating our uh, watercolor um, sampler. And this is showing you a lot of different ways to use watercolor. First of all, watercolor is transparent. You don't ever want to dig, you don't want to grind, and you don't want to smash your brush into the watercolor. So you want to make sure the watercolor brush um, always kind of stays like at the tip. You don't want to like get down into the metal part. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wake up my watercolors by putting a drop of water on each little part. The first thing I'm going to try is the wet on wet watercolor. I'm going to spray it a little bit with this. And then I'm going to um, get some watercolor and I'm going to go ahead and just tap it. We don't want to necessarily move the watercolor around. You just want the watercolor to kind of fill in where the water was. So that's wet on wet. You definitely could um, make it kind of run, but I prefer to just let the water um, do the work for me. So there's that. There's a lot of different techniques you can do on wet on wet, but that is the main one. Wet on dry. This is the more traditional watercolor where we're painting. Our brush is very wet, the watercolor is wet, but the paper's dry. If your brush gets very, very wet or it gets seemingly very, very watery, then you can kind of um, tap it off here. But it isn't, doesn't seem too wet. Watercolor should always look um, transparent. It'll dry a little lighter than it actually is. And if you want it more intense, you can always wait till it dries and add a, um, another layer of watercolor. The next thing is the flat wash. We're gonna just go ahead and paint it a little bit with water. It's not the same as a wet on wet necessarily. Well, I guess it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip my brush in and we're going to just go one way and then go the other way and that's just a flat wash of watercolor. The next uh, watercolor that we'll do is the gradient. The gradient is starts out like a flat wash And we'll add another layer. We don't want to ever scrub the paper. So I paint really gently. Now if you're trying to make your gradient like I am right now and it's very dark all the way like a flat wash, you definitely you can kind of dab with a piece of toilet paper or a piece of this paper. And you can see that the gradient is darker at the bottom and a little lighter. If you feel like the, you'd like the gradient to be more intense, you definitely can add, and I'd like to add. About halfway up, I rinse my, I rinse my um, brush and that there you have it, the gradient. I think it could be even more intense. This is great for um, any kind of um, sunset or ocean or anything like that. The light coming through trees, this is a great thing to have. Now we're going to do the glazing. For the glaze, I'd like you to just paint half of it on each one. That's right. Just like that. And we're going to let that dry. The next thing we're going to do is dry brush. I'm going to go ahead and take a round brush for that. I am wetting the brush. Um, let's say I want to make a green. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the, the top of the, um, 
the lid and I'm going to add a little turquoise and green, make a beautiful light green here. I don't want to make too much. And then I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit. Um, and I'm going to kind of scrape the brush. And this is great if you're using, if you want to make like foliage or any kind of stuff like that. Okay, I'll make it a little more intense. Maybe I'll add a little regular blue, make it kind of a gray green. And you'll drag your brush to the side. If it if it fills in, then you haven't done dry brush. So just make sure it's dried off. So you definitely can create that dry brush effect. And it's great for any kind of um, water or water or bark, if you imagine brown. Okay, so tapping the brush. So you're gonna dip it into a very watery, it seemed a little bit not watery, and you're gonna hold your finger here, you're gonna tap. And you can do Needs to be very watery. This kind of helps control it a little bit. You can see it goes kind of all over the place, but um, I'm gonna try yellow in here too. You don't want to do too many colors, or you can let it dry between colors. Otherwise, they might mix a little bit. The next one is plastic wrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a color. I'm going to make it nice and um, wet. I'm doing wet on dry, but it is quite wet. We want it to be shiny with a lot of color on there. And we're going to take plastic wrap. This is great if you're creating a landscape and making mountains or any kind of texture. Let's say you're doing hair or something. And I just want you to put it on there and smash. The next one is going to be salt. I'll go ahead with blue. This is great if you're making uh, a road. It's a wet on dry, but I do want it to be, it has to be wet when we put the salt on top. This will make a pebbly consistency. It's great for tree, uh, tree foliage or a dirt road or um, anything that you want to have a more of a texture. If you don't want to put too much uh, grains of salt, but you do want to put, you know, enough to cover it, but you, you don't want to like pour it on necessarily. Um, the salt's going to absorb the, the the paint. It's also great for a night sky. If you paint the sky black and you put salt on it, you'll get the stars. And it's nice because the salt's different sizes. The next one is scoring. And there's more techniques than all of this, but this is some of them. So you're taking a tool and you're scoring your paper and then you're going to paint on it and you can see that it makes very dark lines. And because we broke through the paper and we dug past the sizing in the paper, it will really go dark into those lines. And just in case, this is great for like eyebrows or um, hair, um, things like that. Now we're gonna go back here now that this is pretty dry. I can't believe it's that dry. We're gonna do an analogous glaze. And this is really a great, um, watercolor is really all about um, layers and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take an analogous color to orange which is yellow we could have taken red but I'm taking yellow and I'm gonna have you paint over like this 
um, it'll make that third color here. Um, you don't want to like go back and forth too much. You just want to paint the one time. Now the opposite of orange is blue, so I'm going to go ahead with the blue over here. And oh, that's really strong. I have made it a little too watery, sorry. I'm going to just dab it a little bit. But you can see that it creates kind of a brown color. And this is why we took out browns, um, because we can make browns mixing opposite colors. And I'll show you what I mean real quick. On a supplemental piece. If you have or um, blue and then your opposite of blue is orange, you can create a brown. And we did this last year as we were color mixing our color wheel. Here's another example. If you have green, which I already have mixed up, and you mix it with its opposite red, you will get a silvery brown, which is beautiful for trees. Love that brown. Um, if you have violet and you want to mix it with a little of its opposite which is yellow you can mix it and it will create um, a kind of a gray brown I think um, let's mix a little more but it creates a different tone of brown so you can see that these browns are all really interesting browns and um, like if you wanted to do that and you wanted to dry brush like another brown over it, a different brown, you can create a lot of, well, it's not dry enough, but you could. So um, you can kind of work with some different browns there, and it just makes some more interesting colors for you.